Previously, you've seen how this example options.html downloads XML data and displays it. If you use color scheme 1, for example, you get red, green, blue. Use color scheme 2, you get black, white, orange, and the drop down select control there. Start taking a look at how this actually works in HTML and JavaScript. And as you know, we're going to call options1.php for the first set of options, color options, and options2.php for the second set of options. So here is the HTML for the window you've just seen. The header using Ajax and XML appears there. There's a form that displays the controls. There's a select control called option list. It displays the color schemes that you can select from. And there are two buttons, use color scheme 1, use color scheme 2. If the user selects color scheme 1 and clicks the first button, then the get options 1 JavaScript function is called. Let's take a look at the get options 1 JavaScript function. Here, I'm going to check whether or not an XML HTTP request object has been created properly by the page when it first loaded. And if so, then I'm going to open configure the XML HTTP request object to open the options1.php file which is going to give us a server-side script which is going to give us the XML for the first color scheme. The only remaining point here really is that when you connect a function to the on ready state change property you as usual check the XML HTTP request objects ready state property, make sure that it's 4, and the XML HTTP request objects status property, make sure that it's 200, to make sure that the XML data was properly downloaded from options1.php. And the important point here is that you no longer use the response text property of the XML HTTP request object. Instead, you use the XML HTTP request objects response XML property. That's an important point because the response text property would hold only straight text. However, if the data is interpreted by the browser as XML, as it will be in our case, then you use the response XML property. We're going to see how to use the response XML properties XML data in the following movie. There's one last point here that you should notice. If you're going to create a XML HTTP request object in a non-Microsoft browser, you should also execute this line for Firefox, Netscape Navigator, and so forth, XML HTTP request object, override MIME type text slash XML. Often not necessary, and there are certain circumstances in which you'll need this. It prepares the browser, non-Microsoft browsers, to handle XML data. This is not necessary, we just handle text data. However, if you're encountering any issues working with XML data, include this line when you create the XML HTTP request object. Override MIME type, setting the MIME type to text slash XML. MIME type sets the, the format of the data you're working with, and in this case we're setting the format of the data to text slash XML. You may not find this line necessary, however, in some circumstances you will, so it's good to know about that line. If you're working with the Internet Explorer, you, you won't need that line. There's automatic type detection is there, as you see. Okay, so, so far what we've done is we have been able to download from options1.php the XML, which holds the color scheme for option 1, the set of option 1, and you are able to recover that XML data using the response XML property. Now, as it turns out, that gives you an XML document, an XML document object, which is a JavaScript object, which contains the XML data that you've downloaded in object form. So we're going to have to take a look at how to deal with that coming up next. But in this, at this point, we've already downloaded the XML properly. We've used the response XML property as opposed to the response text property. And all that's left then is to interact with the server using the send method, as you see there. And once you do that, the 
function is going to be called, the callback function that you assign to the on ready state change property is going to be called. You recover the XML using the response XML property. So we've recovered the data in an XML document, a JavaScript XML document object. We've got next to see how to extract the data from our XML that we have downloaded.